The Tragic Fate of the SS St. Louis Jewish Refugees So let's get right into it. In May of 1939, 937 anxious Jewish refugees fled the horrors of Nazi Germany aboard an ocean liner named the SS St. Louis. Most were German citizens, though a few were from other European countries like Poland and Austria. The passengers planned to reach Cuba first, then ultimately seek asylum in the United States. Ever since Kristallnacht, the infamous Night of Broken Glass in 1938, the Nazis had begun systematically burning synagogues and confiscating Jewish property throughout Germany and Austria. By 1939, Adolf Hitler had plans to close the German borders, and many countries were imposing quotas, limiting the number of Jewish refugees they take in. Havana, Cuba was seen as a safe, temporary port to get into the United States. At the Hamburg docks, tearful relatives waved goodbye to their loved ones. Given Hitler's anti-Jewish campaigns, they didn't know when or if they might see each other again. Those on the ship knew they were the lucky ones, managing to get out of Germany just in time. For many passengers, the anxiety they felt soon faded as the St. Louis began a quiet two-week voyage across the Atlantic Ocean. On board was a swimming pool, a dance band in the evenings, and even a movie theater. There were regular meals with rich foods that the passengers rarely ate given the rationing in pre-war Germany. Under Captain Gustav Schroeder, the crew was ordered to treat the passengers with respect, a sharp contrast to the open hatred Jews received under the Nazis. Children were told by relieved parents that they were finally safe. They were going away and didn't have to look over their shoulders in fear ever again. When the ocean liner reached Havana in May, that sense of relief soon evaporated, replaced by fear and a growing dread. Passengers were up on deck, their suitcases packed and ready to disembark, when Cuban officials came on board. But nothing happened. It quickly became clear the ship was not going to be allowed to dock, and no one would be allowed off. They kept hearing the words, manana, manana, from the Cuban officials. For seven nerve-wracking days, Captain Schroeder tried in vain to persuade the Cuban authorities to allow his passengers to disembark. The Cubans declined their visas out of fear of being seen as a sanctuary and inundated with even more Jewish refugees from Europe. Even before the ship sailed, Havana newspapers demanded the government stop admitting Jews. The Cuban president had issued a decree a week before the ship left that invalidated all landing certificates. Like the United States, Cuba still suffered with the Great Depression. Many resented the refugees already admitted as they competed for scarce Cuban jobs. The owners of the St. Louis knew before the ship sailed that its passengers might have trouble disembarking, but they told none of them. The plight of the SS St. Louis attracted a great deal of attention in the media. After Cuba denied entry to the refugees, the press in Europe and the United States broke the story to millions around the globe. Though U.S. newspapers were sympathetic to the refugees' plight, only a few editors suggested that the United States actually admit them instead. Hostility toward immigrants had fueled xenophobia and isolationism in the United States as well. Captain Schroeder had no choice but to leave Havana and sail directly to Florida. Ultimately, U.S. US authorities also refused to allow it to dock. Sailing so close to Florida, they could see the nightlights of Miami and hear the city sounds. Passengers desperately telegraphed the president, pleading for refuge. Franklin D. Roosevelt never responded directly. The State Department sent a telegram to the ship, stating that passengers must wait their turns and qualify for visas before they could be admitted. Quotas established in the 1920s strictly limited the number of immigrants who could be admitted each year. In 1939, due to Nazi aggression against the Jews, the annual German immigration quota was quickly filled with a long waiting list of several years. 
U.S. public opinion, though critical of Hitler and sympathetic to the refugees, favored immigration restrictions nonetheless. Like Cuba, the Great Depressions left millions without work and fearful of competition for scarce jobs. President Roosevelt could have issued an executive order, but public hostility to immigrants and a forthcoming election were among his bigger concerns. By June of 1939, Captain Schroeder had no option but to turn the ocean liner around and head back to Europe. The joy the Jewish passengers had felt in May was replaced by desperation once again. No one dared speak about what the Nazis would do to them once they returned to Germany. People were openly weeping as they wandered the ship's decks. One passenger even committed suicide by slitting his wrists and jumping overboard. As it turned out, the Jews did not have to return to Nazi Germany. Instead, four European countries ag agreed to split up the refugees. In June, the SS St. Louis docked at Antwerp, Belgium, over a month after it had left Germany. Four governments agreed to, agreed to secure visas for those passengers. Great Britain took 288, the Netherlands 181, Belgium 214, and France 224. Of the 288 passengers admitted to the UK, all survived the World War II safely on English soil. Unfortunately, of the 620 Jews who were forced to return to Europe, 532 were trapped when the Nazi Blitzkrieg stormed through Western Europe in 1940, seizing Belgium, the Netherlands, and ultimately France. Nearly all the Jewish refugees were captured and sent east to Nazi death camps in Poland and Germany. 278 managed to survive the deadly Holocaust, but alas, 254 souls did not. <laughs>